Hi, I'm James Knott. I'm here at the Columbus Beer Fest with the members of the Better Beer Authority. We're going to go out and try the beers and see what's new, what we're excited about, and report back. The Columbus Winter Beer Fest was held January 14th and 15th at the Columbus Convention Center in Ohio. There were 160 craft beers from 45 breweries. I spoke with Craig Johnson, the director of the festival. I think it's, it's pretty clear that Columbus's beer scene is just keeps advancing and you've got such a, a, a base with the great breweries that we have here in, in, in Columbus. Uh, that's unique. It's not every town that has them. What makes the Columbus Winter Beer Fest unique? BBA member Chef Harms is focusing on the local stuff. I just like the fact that there's a lot of uh, uh, Ohio breweries here uh, that are supporting uh, the local brew and they, they really, really stepped up the craft beer scene in Ohio. I think we've had a lot of great beers here. We're standing in front of Columbus uh, Brewing Company, which really they have a nice beer, beer selection as well. Uh, I think that it really, really, the craft brew scene in Columbus, Ohio is really stepping out. But there's not just unique local beers. Angelo Signorino, the brewmaster for Barley's Brewing Company at Ale House Number no. 1, tells us what they are doing specifically for this event. We have beers that we've saved specifically for this event because I think that these, the people that come to Brewfest really want to find beer that is outside of the norm. In Columbus, Ohio, there's camaraderie between the local breweries. Besides your own beers, do you have any other brewers that you're excited about here? The more localer, the more better. I feel like that about everything. Columbus Brewing Company, Gordon Beers, um, Elevator. Uh, there's the new Mulholland Brewery around the corner. They're all wonderful, doing a great job. Angelo also gives us some insight into why some local brewers remain local. We don't bottle. It's not something that could be ruled out, but I feel like bottled beer is not treated with the same respect that keg beer is. And like a bakery, if you buy a loaf of bread where it's baked, it's gonna taste so much better than if you buy it a mile or two away. In the meantime, Dick Stevens from Elevator Brewing Company seems to be taking his local brewery in the other direction. What's in store for Elevator in 2011? Mostly, uh, I think we're gonna concentrate on uh, our bottle sales, which has uh, skyrocketed. So we look to, we look to double our sales uh, in, in accounts this next year. There were other sights to see at the Beer Fest. PBA member Scott Flickhan fell in love with the truck full of hops. Ten different taps from different breweries, all hops. Just beers that aren't your usual BMC beers. And you see that mainstream's just attacking them and really drinking them so heavily that, and when I say heavily, I don't mean in mass quantities, but I mean that everyone is trying them. It's become just a broad spectrum that everyone's kind of reaching out and touching. And I love it. The local home brewing club, Sods, volunteers to pour beer at the Beer Fest. John Coaster, the brewmaster for the Mommy Bay Brewing Company, talks about why this event is great for home brewers. I mean, you can meet connections. You never know, you might be able to find an internship at a brewery. You know, I mean, like uh, the assistant brewer, Clint, he started as a volunteer and now he's, uh, he's a, like almost a full-time brewer, so. Speaking of homebrew, Elzebel, the official beer fest festival ale, was actually a homebrew. Jason Roper, the owner and brewmaster of Rivertown Brewing Company, explains. Yeah, actually it was a, uh, a local homebrew competition uh, with the Cincinnati Malt Infusers um, that uh, put on October Beer Fest, this is back in September. Um, the winner got to brew a 10 barrel batch with Rivertown Brewing Company. So the uh, Elzebel, which is the Belgian Triple Stout, was the winner of the competition. Actually Craig, who uh, is the founder of this uh, great event, uh, picked the beer and we sat down, we collaborated, put it together and the rest is history. BBA member Joby Johnston found one beer that he was really excited to share with the BBA community. A lot of the BBA viewers out there would enjoy this beer that I found. It is the original triple hot brewed, great taste, less filling, Miller Lite. Oh yeah? That sounds pretty delicious. What else have you found here at the Beer Fest? Well, you know, there's a lot of beers out here, but nothing really ranks up to the Miller Lite. But, you know, I did try tonight the Arrogant Double Bastard, which actually is very smoother, a lot smoother than the Arrogant Bastard. And um, the Elsbell from 
the Rivertown Brewing Company in Cincinnati, Ohio. Both of those beers are great, but none of them rank up to Miller Lite. I mean, look at this beer. It's great. While Joby revisited an old favorite, BBA member Mark Smith was excited to taste a new discovery. For me, it's an opportunity to try new breweries that I've never heard of before that are in this region of the country and then have beers that I've never had before. Uh, I mean, North Peak Brewery is a perfect example. I've never heard of this brewery before, never had their beer. Uh, this is their Diabolical, as it's called. It's an IPA. Um, very citrusy, very hoppy. I mean, I really enjoy the beer. I really enjoy the fact that I had the opportunity to try something new. Mike Turiff, the VP of Sales, explains North Peak Brewing Company's philosophy. I hope I don't get any of the Ohioans upset about this, but everything that we do is based upon Michigan and, and, and really the whole brewed up north is kind of our tagline. So everything we want to do is kind of a north woodsy, northern Michigan, uh, and that's kind of evident from the uh, icons and characters on our bottles and our names and things like that. It's kind of a, uh, we like to refer to our brewery up north as our uh, northern Michigan hideaway. Craft beer hasn't really penetrated here in Columbus like it has in some other markets, whether it be Cleveland or even Cincinnati or Dayton. So I think this festival is really important because it really opens up the consumers' minds and their taste buds to what great craft beer is really about. Massey Lawson, with Cavalier Distributing, gives us her take on the Columbus Winter Beer Fest. It's a very important event. It's good for Columbus to um, be more knowledgeable about craft beer. Craft beer is a growing industry. And um, it's very important. These people make great beer, and uh, a lot of people don't know about it. They can come here, they can try lots of good beers, and uh, hopefully start drinking better beer than the yellow fizzy stuff. Now I was getting a little thirsty, so Chef and Mark wrapped up the on-air work for me. Thanks, guys. So hey, Chef, did you have fun at the, the Columbus Beer Fest this year? I sure did, man. There's a lot of good beers. There's a lot of great uh, breweries came out tonight. I had a blast too, man. A lot of good beers. How do we sign this thing out? Better Beer Authority. Better Beer. Better Beer Authority.